Good evening, everyone. This is Susan Campfield with SueStampfield.com. How are you doing tonight? Welcome to my craft room. Come on in, grab a beverage, sit back, relax. We're just going to play with some stamps, ink, and paper tonight and some dies and some embossing folders, you know, all the good things. So hello, thanks for coming and hanging out with me on this Saturday night. It is sunny here in Minnesota. It was in the 70s today. This is the warmest day we've had all year. And uh, it's actually warmer than normal. Make sure my microphone is plugged in. Let me know if you can hear me, please, and see me and all the things. So, um, Happy Saturday. And tomorrow is Mother's Day. So for those of you out there who are moms or um, it, even like, you know, I'm a mom, but I'm also a, a mother of some fur babies. So uh, that counts too, totally counts too. So I hope uh, if you are in that category, you have a chance to uh, be spoiled tomorrow and relax and enjoy, maybe do a little fun crafting. So we did deserve a beautiful day. Today was gorgeous. It's supposed to be up, up in the 80s this week. So that is much warmer than normal for May. So after a really cold April, it's nice to see it be uh, gorgeous out. So welcome everyone. Lots of friends checking in. Oh my goodness, from all over the country and uh, possibly the world. I don't see any of our Australia friends right now. Sorry, old eyes. <laughs> I gotta go back a little bit to make sure I can see everyone. So welcome everyone. Oh, you're right. Melissa's right across from uh, the Kentucky Derby. So in the United States here, the Kentucky Derby race horse race was today. And I understand there was quite an upset that uh, a horse that was entered in the race yesterday just for practice uh, ended up winning the whole shebang. So uh, hi, Deborah. How are you? Uh, welcome, everyone. We're going to do some creating tonight. We're going to use uh, do some creating with a suite in the uh, brand new Stampin' Up! catalog. Where is it? Right here. Do, 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 do. Now, if you don't have a catalog yet, a paper catalog, so much easier to look at the paper catalog than look online. I'm more than happy to send you one. Just shoot me an email and that is at susan at suestampfield.com and I'll drop a catalog in the mail to you so you can look at all of the beautiful things. And there are so many samples in there that are really inspirational and give you ideas even for uh, what you already have or color combinations, all of those things. So, um, so thanks for being here. Now I'm going to show you some projects tonight that will be uh, coming out in projects. Oh, wrong one. That's my email. What did I show before? Oh my gosh, you guys. It's going to be one of those nights. I might have shown this. So project sheets. Um, if you're not subscribing to my free project sheets, you must not ever need any ideas because I always need ideas. So I love to share those project sheets project sheets with you. Some of the project sheets are uh, projects we do right here on our videos. And then I link the video in there as well. Some of them I'm in a collaboration uh, with uh, 50 other demonstrators and we every month we come up with project sheets. So that gives me a large pool to, to uh, use and and um, and I share with them as well. So uh, so I love to share. And if you subscribe to the free project sheets, you'll get those ideas in the mail. So Let's go back. I always forget to take these down. There we go. Um, but tonight we're going to play with one of the favorite, one of my favorite suites. Now, demonstrators were able to pre-order from the annual catalog a month early. It's one of the fun perks about being a demonstrator. And there's limited things. You know, we're, we're not, we can't order everything because it's not available yet. But there are, you know, certain things that we can order. I'll make sure all my lights are on. Yeah, they are. And uh, one of the ones that I ordered right away was this sun print suite, which is just gorgeous. And I've been having a lot of fun creating with that before the catalog even went live. And so um, we're going to do a little more creating tonight. And I'm hoping you guys will help me uh, design this card. Uh, we can go two different colorways. I think I might know which way you want to go, but I could be wrong. It's happened before. So uh, so we're going to go ahead and just have fun, stamp, and do a little creating. So let's, on that note, let's go ahead and switch to my desktop camera here. All the technology things. Yay. All right. Technology is working for me today. 
<clears throat> grabbing the catalog because I didn't have it over here. And uh, I'm going to refer to that a little bit here with the Sunprint Suite. Uh, before I get into that, I do want to tell you, if you have uh, a big wish list of um, things in the catalog that you want, um, sorry, tidying up my desk, that should have happened prior to <laughs> the start of the video. Let me just, oh, I'm going to raise this up just a skosh. There we go. Um, if you have a lot of things on your wish list, um, and if you often get the in colors uh, for Stampin' Up, this year's in colors are awesome. They are nice and bright. Oh, he's upside down. He, uh, they're nice and bright and bold. We've got Tahitian Tide. I'm still learning them, so it's good for me to practice. Orchid Oasis. Parakeet Party. Starry Sky. And this one that I always get wrong, and I'm going to get it right tonight, I swear, Sweet Sorbet. So these are the five new in colors. And um, if you have a large wish list, there is a, a really good deal. One of my jobs as your, um, as your inspirational coach here with paper crafting is to help you get the best deal possible and maximize your value. And right now, if you purchase the starter kit, you get all five of these ink pads for free. You also get this pack of pattern paper for free. You also get a, a assorted pack of these card stocks, which I didn't actually use on these cards, for free. And you get a pack of, um, of grid paper. I tend to use the little grid papers for my videos here because they fit on my screen. But this is big, long grid paper that actually has the different in colors right in the grid paper, which is really fun. Those are free on top of the really awesome starter kit deal, which is uh, $99 plus tax and shipping here in the United States. Or excuse me. There's no, uh, no shipping, $99 plus tax, and you get $125 of product of your choice. You just go through the catalog, pick what you want, and then you get all of these in color things as an extra freebie. So uh, again, it's, it's the best way to really max out on your value. All right, we're going to use, you ordered all the new Stampin' Pads. Oh, they're, yeah, they're pretty awesome. All right, let me just go here and pull this up. I'm going to try to find our page number. I should have had that ready. So sorry. I think I'd have it flagged in my one of my other catalogs, but this one. All right. So the suite that we're going to play with tonight is this one. It is called Sunprint Suite. And um, in the suite, you get the stamp set, which is shown here. You get the dies for the stamp set. Some of the dies cut out the images and some of them may cut out other shapes. We'll look at those in a moment. And then you get this gorgeous sun prints paper, which we'll also look at in a moment. And then you get an embossing folder, the fern embossing folder. Now you don't have to get the whole sweet collection with all of these products in it. You can pick and choose the ones that you want. Um, if you get the, the, the benefit of the Sun Prince collection is that you can do it, order it with one number. <laughs> so you don't have to hunt and peck and enter in all of those numbers. So if you want all of it, um, that's just easier. Um, you get the savings comes from uh, the stamp sets and the dies, and that's part of the suite. But if you just want the stamp sets and dies, you still get that 10% saving for the bundle. So this is the one that we're going to play with once again tonight. And Thank you so much for sharing, Marsha Lynn. I do appreciate that so much. All right, so let's look, let's do a little deeper dive here. Let's take a look at, um, this is the stamp set, Nature's Prints. And so let's bring in our dies. So this, these uh, four images here have uh, dies that die cut them out. And then we have uh, a label that these uh, messages fit on. And that's this one right here, which has a beautiful embossed edge. Let's take a look at that. Whoops, I'm gonna have to zoom it in, I think. Let's just slide you guys over here. Zoom it up. This one's got a little ink blubby on it, but that's okay. Um, can you see that? Oh, I've got ink on me. That's probably where it's coming from. What a shocker, right? <laughs> um, 
can you see that embossed edge on this label? I, I love this label. It's really attractive, makes really pretty cards, and all of the images here fit on the label. So let's zoom back out. Ooh, that was really close. Then we also have this kind of splatter effect, which can just kind of fill in some of the excess white on your white space on your card, or it's really nice for the inside too. And you don't have to stamp it full length, you can stamp that off. And so those are the stamps in the Nature's Prints. And let's look at the dies here. So we have the four dies that die cut out the stamped images, and we have the label. We already talked about those. In addition, we have this die which is like a wreath. So um, it die cuts out uh, kind of a wreath shape. Now my favorite way to have to use this die so far has actually been to cut it into thirds. So I cut one and then I cut it apart. You can see kind of a perfect uh, separation right there where you have a different um, sprig here and a different sprig here. And so that's been the way I've used this the most. I've cut into thirds. You can probably even cut it into fourths if you wanted to. Um, or you can use it whole. It is quite large, so it would take up a fair amount of your card, but it would make a really simple card because you've already got a lot going on there, right? So um, so you could do the, the wreath and just the sentiment and you know, maybe pop that on the designer paper. And that's a pretty gorgeous card right there without a whole lot of uh, messing around, right? So, um, so that's the wreath. And then we also have two of these long leafy stems. Let's bring in two of those here. I've got, I've got all sorts of bits and pieces, die cuts laying on my desk. I bet you do too, right? <laughs> so we've got these two long leafy stems. And then they're, so you can, they're the same, exactly the same die. But if you're going to do, a, you know, kind of a bouquet of where you want a lot of these, you can cut multiples at the same time. And then these little guys are, let me peel this one off here. These three dies are similar. There are two that are identical and one that is the reverse of the other two. And these, again, are just kind of bouquet builders or wreath builders. So um, you can get uh, uh, multiples uh, with uh, just a few cranks of the machine because there are multiple dies. And those look just like this. Um, obviously, one is the reverse and the other two the other way, but they're all very similar. So those are the dies. And let's look at that gorgeous paper and then we'll take a peek at the embossing folder. So these are the papers. Now Sun Prints is actually a, um, if you take a photo sensitive paper and you uh, attach actual plants to it and put it in the bright sun, it will, the plants will bleach out um, or the sun will cause the plant shapes to, to show up in the paper. You can actually even do it with construction paper. Uh, I don't think it shows up white. It shows up a, a lighter version of the color of construction paper. Actually, I think the, the plants show up darker and the background um, fades out. But anyway, it's that's if you're wondering where that sun print's name comes from, um, that is the, the nature of it. So... Um, Aloha from Hawaii <laughs> and happy Mother's Day tomorrow to you too. So these are the papers. So this is one side. Um, this one, let me show you, this is not necessarily a good representation of this paper um, because uh, that might be a little, um, let me see if I can zoom out anymore. That's as far as I can go, but I can raise up a little bit. So this one is perfect for scrapbooking uh, because it has the patterns going uh, across the, I guess if you do it this way, across the bottom and up one side, if you do it this way, all along one side and across the bottom, um, it's not everywhere. And so this is a great one for scrapbooking or for portions of cards, or sometimes it's nice to just have a dark solid part. I've used that as well. Um, so just to let you know that, that this pattern is not everywhere on that one sheet. Then we have this one that is kind of a splatter, a paint splatter effect almost. Put it this way. Then we have this one, which is um, just a kind of a white, uh, kind of a fern look. This one is uh, just a um, zoom in a little bit. So it's little blotches of navy there. 
all together. And then this one that is little circular bits and almost looks like um, dandelion fluff is what it reminds me of. Um, so there's that one. Let's look at the other side now. The other side, we start introducing some gray granite. So let me talk just briefly about the colors that are in this paper. Because I'm finding that when I'm creating with this paper, it is important to look at what colors are in it and what color is the most prevalent is playing an important part in how my cards are coming out. So the colors in this paper are Night of Navy, Pacific Point, Starry Sky, and gray granite and then of course some white um, so gray granite grab a piece of gray granite this is gray granite it is a i would call it a taupe it is a, a brownish gray a very nice neutral and then um, this is starry sky pacific point is quite bright So this is Starry Sky and Pacific Point. There is only a very small amount of those two colors in these papers. You can see it's just kind of the accent there. Um, this one probably has the most Starry Sky in it, but actually my favorite paper to, to use with this and favorite ink has been good old Night of Navy, which is one of my favorite colors. It does go really well with all of the blues in these papers. And so um, if you're trying with some of the brighter blues, it might be more challenging. Try navy. It's actually in our neutrals. Believe it or not, navy, it can be a neutral depending on how you use it. So that's just been my... Um, my color my my experience with the colors sun printing is also called cy oh, cyanotype printing hmm, interesting see now we all learned something well, we're going to be so smart when we just peel off that word cyanotype thank you denise i'm going to show denise's comment there in case you're wondering how to spell cyanotype it's like c-y-a-n like cyan blue right so then the other side of these papers we start introducing some um some of the gray granite. I love this one. It's got some very faint script. You really can't make out what the words are, but it's um, script in white. Let me zoom it up a little bit. Just with some lighter and darker stippling texture. And it's quite stunning. I'll show you a card I did with this. Um, that I just did for a swap. This one uh, also has some of that gray granite. It is paired with white. Um, it, it almost looks like vanilla on that one, but it is white. Uh, then here's another one. You can see where these gray granites come in. Now this one, it does have the navy and white again in a stripe and maybe even a little bit of the starry sky there. This one is um, probably more um, starry sky and night of navy kind of uh, sponged look almost. And then the back of this one is back to the gray granite. So that is the Sun Prince paper. And the other part of the suite is this super cool, awesome, amazing embossing folder. I really love it. I've been using this one a ton. I've been using this whole suite a ton. But this is the 3D Fern embossing folder. And it is... Um, it reminds me of like a fossil in that it's not... Um, some parts are a little bit flatter and some parts are more raised up. So you get a lot of texture and difference throughout your pattern. And it's just, um, it's just totally amazing and awesome. So, um, so that is the fern embossing folder. Let me zoom out even a bit more here. There we go. And let's look at some cards. So we looked at, we've been playing with this one quite a bit, but it was before this was even available. So now that it's available, we'll take a look again. So this was our paper scrap uh, technique of just a way to use little scraps of paper. This is a two by three inch piece of paper. Uh, those of you who subscribe to my project sheet emails, this was a project sheet with I think I had four cards um, with completely different products done with this layout. And there is a video for this one as well. You can see that beautiful fern. Um, so this has been my favorite kind of go-to go -to, uh, color combination for this suite is using Night of Navy with that beautiful Sun Prince paper and Night of Navy ink. And this one had pearls on it. One of my viewers suggested adding the pearls, which was 
perfect for this paper. So that is that one. Let's take a little bit uh, more of a look here at um, some of the others. This is one we, you went, helped me create. Was, I don't know if it was the Saturday or Tuesday. Those are the two nights I go live. But uh, we used the uh, beautiful shapes dies, the hexagons, to build this one. And uh, this one that we had iridescent rhinestones on the hexagons and regular rhinestones on the label. And then this one was a, and that was a, this was a project sheet. La oh gosh, sorry, hit the camera. This is a project sheet last week, right? I think so. Um, this one was a project sheet a few weeks back. Um, this is what I call the angle cut. Uh, you take a piece of cardstock and then you, uh, excuse me, a designer paper and you cut it at an angle. There's certain measurements that you line it up with. You'll find this video on my YouTube channel here. Um, I will link it in this description in case you're watching the replay. Um, you can find it, the link to it there. But here's where I was talking about using a portion. Now this one I used quite a bit longer portion. Let's see if we can decide which we can find the portion I used. It looks like this part. So this one I actually only, I used almost half of the wreath. Um, for this longer portion. And then I've been using these two shorter ones for other cards. Um, so that's what I was talking about, about using just a portion of that wreath. And when you use it as a portion, it doesn't look round like a wreath at all, does it? It looks just more like a spray of leaves. Blue and white, dark blues and white are very elegant. I totally agree with you, Denise. And you can probably tell that's one of my favorite color combinations is navy and white because it is so striking. Um, and before we get into the gray granite card, um, this card is going to be those of you that placed a qualifying order this month for Crafter Noon. You'll be receiving the packet to make this fun fold card with the 3D pop-ups inside. Um, you'll be receiving the packet to make this card uh, next week. Well, they'll go out next week, so you receive it sometime after that. And then I'll be doing a video that'll be a public video. You can all watch this one coming up on May 20th. So. Um, keep an eye out for that. And then this is the gray granite uh, version that I did for a swap that was Thursday night. Um, this is the fun fold card, the same fun fold card that I used for the birds. I know they look completely different, but they're the same fold. So if you find the bird um, video, you'll see the, the measurements for this, um, this fun fold here. But this is that, let me zoom in a little bit. Whoa, wrong way, Sue. <laughs> this is the that textured uh, paper that just really adds a lot of elegance to your card. You can see I did just, again, just a portion. Let's see if we can find which one I used. It was this one right here. Just a portion of this wreath uh, and to build my spray under here. I stamped uh, in gray granite ink on gray granite paper, die cut that out. And then I did this uh, long skinny guy <laughs> right here. I did one of those uh, and added that as well. So that one, and then also the pearls, again, were the perfect uh, matchup for this one. So this is what it looks like. This suite is so elegant. So um, again, whether you use the blue and the white, oh my gosh, you guys, I keep bumping my camera. I'm going to have to move this box of cards because it's um, <laughs> causing problems. Um, whether you use it in the gray granite and white or the navy and white, they're both super elegant. And that leads me to tonight's card because um, we need to decide in tonight's card if we're going to go with navy and white or if we're going to go with gray granite and white. There'll be a lot of white on this card. The color will just be the accent. We can go either way. Um, so I've done my sample in navy and white, but we can do it in the gray granite if that's your preference. So let me know. I'd love to have you vote if you want navy or if you want the granite. So if you can drop a comment, uh, the nail, my nails match the gray card. I need to get my nails redone. They're really uh, growing out, but that'll happen. That'll have to happen next week. It should have happened today, but um, so let me know if you want the navy or the granite. They're um, either one's going to be a, a, I think, a good card. So uh, let me know your vote 
I let's see here. I might have to do some counting. We're going to, this is going to be a close one tonight. I can tell. I'll count on my two different hands. Uh, three, four, five, five. Why do you make it so hard? Navy, Navy, granite, Navy. Oh gosh, you guys, it's super close. Seriously. Oh, there's another granite coming in. So those two wipe each other, wipe each other out. Those two wipe each other out. Oh, uh, Boy, Navy might just be edging out just a teensy bit. Holy moly, you guys. We might we might have to do both of them, one of each. <laughs> uh, yeah, Nancy, I like the way you think. <laughs> one of each, we might have to do that. Uh, can I do that? Um, yeah, we, can maybe, we could probably make that happen. All right, so um, let me grab... Goodness, I left my stuff over the other side of the room. All right, so let's let's give it a go here. All right, we're gonna start by doing our die cutting, or excuse me, our embossing. And in a future video, I will be sharing how you can uh, sponge ink on this folder to add. Okay, I keep bumping the camera. What the heck is my problem? All right, I'm gonna reposition it. See if that. So sorry, you guys. Let's see if that helps. <laughs> Don't know if it will, but there we go. All right. So what do I want here? I need some paper. Paper would be so awesome right now. Oh, here. Look, I found some paper. Yay. All right. So let's emboss this. This is a 3D embossing folder. So we don't need anything at the bottom. We're just going to go right on number one here. And then we're going to use the... Here's the number, number four, which is the uh, 3D um, plate. And that's all you need. So we're just going to crank that through. It turns like butter. This one does, is a, a standard size folder. Um, so it does not fit in the, the mini machine. Those have to be the skinny ones. And there are some really nice skinny ones. But this is what that looks like. You can see that detail there. But can you see how... In some areas, it's flatter. In other areas, it's more raised up, which it gives it that kind of really cool fossilized look, which I absolutely love. So instead of one all over texture, it gives you a, um, there, was a there was a little splodge on one side there, so I'm flipping it over. Uh, it gives you a variety of textures, which... Uh, Adds to your card. Adding that text to your card is really awesome. So, clunk. All right, if we're making two cards here, we have to have two, two pieces, right? Let's see if I can go out of skosh more here. There we go. Got lots of bits over here we can use. All right, so we've got that. Let me set that aside. Now I'm going to bring in my die adapter, which is number two my uh, a plate that's a number three plate that's all scarred up and cut up and it is such pretty embossing isn't it maybe you're still zoomed a bit close is this better Jean? i did zoom out a little bit it's hard when i have this big machine here but I, this is i think this almost as far out as i can go all right so now uh susan you need some things yes i do what do i need let's grab this hmm. Uh, I don't know if I want this one or <laughs> bear with me. Right. Thought I had a piece of this other one all ready to go. Where did it go? It wandered off. Here it is. I think I'm going to go with this one. So we're actually going to do some die cutting. Can't decide, you guys. Oh, my gosh. It's one of those nights where I'm indecisive, which is where you guys come in. So I'm going to do one of these fronds. Is that what you call it? A leafy stem, whatever you want to call it. Um, and this one out of one of the patterns of paper. And then I'm going to also die cut doot, 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 doot. the other front. Look at this. Look at us making two cards in one go. Love it. 
and another frond. I don't care which way they go. Do I care which way they go? Um, well, that one is the opposite of my sample, but does it matter? I don't think it matters. I'll grab this one. All right. I want to make sure I get a little bit of pattern on these. So I'm going to just put them on the more patterny side of the paper and let's die cut those out. There we go. So exciting. All right. So we've got our die cut bits. So we've just done some leaves out of that sun print paper. So now we have some of the white, some of the blue. Isn't that pretty? It's a great way to use up those extra designer paper scraps that you've got hanging around. I know you've got them or hanging around. I know I sure do. And I'm going to pop that back on there. Let's put this back on two. And then let's see how these look. So this one, I went with a little bit uh, quieter uh, pattern because the other one had a lot of white in it and it's going in a white card. So we'll see if we made the right choice here. This one doesn't want to come out, but we have these handy dandy little ejection holes. I'm going to just grab our take your pick tool and poke that out. So you can see the pattern in there. Let me see if I zoom it up here. Oh my gosh, hold on. <laughs> lost my old camera there so you can see the pattern there all right i think i'm all the way zoomed out all right so we've got those little bits um all right i'm realizing i should have done some stamping before i got out this monster machine here but do you suppose do you suppose i could do it right here Maybe if I take you guys off. Oh, don't be so lazy, Susan. Just move the machine. Oh my gosh, you guys. I'm such a lazy stamper. It's terrible. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. So let's let's do a couple greetings here. So why don't we do your on my mind? which is really nice. I mean, that works with birthday cards, get well cards, sympathy cards. It's really one of those dual purpose sentiments, right? It does all the things. And then I'm going to grab my gray granite ink here and stamp that. So I'm probably bouncing the camera a little bit here. So I've got that loaded up in gray granite ink. Stamp that on there. Oh my gosh. What drunken sailor stamped that? That's totally crooked, Sue. <laughs> Let's try it. All right, that's that's a little better. And I think I already have. Let me see if I I think I might have one. Oh, I already have a good night of navy. Remember last video I said I had this all ready to go and I couldn't find it? I think this one looks pretty good right here. Oh, this one's even better. All right, well, we'll go with this one. I've been doing a lot of swaps lately, so I have little extra bits, leftover things all over the place. Let's try that. I might leave this down because we might need it. Okay, we're going to go with this. <gasps> we're making two cards tonight, you guys. We're doing a twofer. How exciting. All right, let's go back to our setup here. And let's see if I can cut straight. <clears throat> Couldn't stamp straight. Oh, you know what? I could use I could use the new magnetic plate, but it is downstairs. Darn it. Um, you know what? Let's see. I accidentally highlighted a comment. Sorry about that. <laughs> ah, so funny. Oh, you stamp on the platform all the time. Efficient. Yeah, that is efficiency. Um, yay for secret stamp pieces everywhere, right? All right. So um, I have the brand new magnetic platform, but it is not up in my craft room. It is downstairs in my classroom because it's in a bag. Uh, I did a box party with my team member, Rachel Tessman, for our team 
and it's still in there. So sorry, we'll use that next time. I promise because it's awesome and it would be perfect for this. But I don't want to take the time to go dig it out right now. All right, let's crank it through. Fingers crossed that I, that I cut straight because, you know, some days, <laughs> some days it just doesn't work that way. All right. Straight enough. I can live with that. All right. Hopefully you guys can too. All right. We're going to move this aside. Oh, two cards. Oh my goodness. All right. I've got one card ready. I didn't have a second one ready. I didn't know we were doing that. Hold the phone. It won't take me but a moment. Just going to cut this one. All right. I'm not even going to score it. I'm just going to use my bone folder and make it happen. So we have a five and a half by eight and a half piece of cardstock in basic white. Everybody has that hanging around, right? Uh oh, front row. I put my swaps together downstairs and I think I moved my seal down there. Ding. All right, well, I've got some seal plus here, so we will make that work. Um, with the Seal Plus, it is so strong. I usually don't use it with embossed pieces because it can actually rip the paper. So I'm going to put it right straight up on my card here um, instead of on the embossing. And with the Seal Plus, I like to just pull it and then I tilt it backwards to um, th this uh, tape is perforated. And so that way I hit the little perforations and it breaks nice and clean by tilting it backwards. And let's add one more right there. All right. We've got two sticky cards. And we've got our... Oh, it's so pretty already, you guys. Our beautiful palette here with our fern background that's ready for a little decorating. All right, there we go. Okay, so we're gonna do a night of, uh, no, we're gonna do gray granite. So I went ahead and stamped ahead of time. This actually wasn't even for this card. I just, again, already stamped, already die cut. So let's use it, right? It's laying right here on my desk. So I have this, um, I don't know, what would we call that? This flowering weed thing. <laughs> I'm sure it's an actual plant, but I have no idea which one. And then for this card, we'll use um, the fern. So this was stamped in uh, gray granite on white and die cut out with the matching die cut. This one was stamped in Night of Navy and die cut out with the matching fern die. Now, one, one uh, here's a secret tip. <laughs> Sometimes when we die cut, it doesn't come out absolutely perfect, right? Like maybe it's a little more white on one side. Like this one is not absolutely perfect. But you know what? When we layer it on white, it doesn't show. <laughs> it disappears. And then it looks absolutely perfect. So sometimes white backgrounds can really be your friend. So let's grab our sentiments. So we're going to put this one on this card and this one on this card. And then we're going to add in our little bits that we die cut. So we had this for the gray granite. We did the pattern paper and we die cut out that stem. We're going to tuck that in right there. And then for this one, we uh, die cut this piece. Now, Normally, I would add in, oh, we might need to do one more die cut here. Dang. I don't think I have one die cut. I thought maybe I'd have one in white, but I don't see that either. That's okay. We can do that. And here's the die cut uh, um, leaf and stem that I did. So, ragweed, maybe? Oh, that doesn't sound very pleasant, does it? <laughs> I would like to see inking on the embossing powder, on the embossing folder, I think you meant. Um, yes, we will do that in a future video because that I think will be this folder, I think will be really 
um, good for that. So, um, so we're going to just kind of layer these bits um, together. I want the fern on top and then I'm going to add in one more leafy stem. This one is in solid Knight of Navy, just like that. This little stem here, I'm going to tuck it behind and actually have it even curling and overlapping the label just a little bit. And I want to do the same one on this one, but I need a night, I need a gray granite um, leafy stem. So let's bring our machine back in and we're going to put our two cards together really quick. So just so happen to have a chunk of gray granite hanging out, just waiting to be die cut, right? Let's grab in one of those uh, leafy stems here. I don't know if that's the right term, but leafy stem seems to fit the bill. So we're going to go with it. So let's put that in here. Crank that through. Sorry about that. I sh should have remembered that we needed one of those two. Could have got away without it, but um, I like to work in threes. It's supposed to be visually more pleasing in threes. That's what you're supposed to do. Or odd numbers, I guess, are the same when, um, when you're doing a, a bouquet, which I'm not very good at. All right, so I'm going to pull that out there. And we have our gray granite piece. So let's bring our cards back in, and we're going to put them together. So flip you around here. And there we have our two versions. They don't look very nice right now, but they're about to. <laughs> so I'm going to attach these to the back of my label. And I'm just going to use glue dots for that. And then I will be using dimensionals, of course. When, when have I not used dimensionals on a video? Really? It's probably happened, but it'd be pretty rare. So I'm just going to attach a glue dot here. I'm going to Move it off my card so it doesn't stick to something I don't want it to stick to. Grab another little glue dot. Pop that on right here. Oh, sticky. That's the point. They're supposed to be sticky, right? Ooh. Again, I'm going to swipe you guys out of the way. All right. Put this right on here. All right. So for this one, oh, forgot our fern. The glue dot on here. All right, so I'm putting it on top of the image because I want them to stick here. So the fern I actually want to be um, on top of the stack. So I'm going to add that first. Okay, and then the uh, patterned one I'll put next. Now this can go sideways, it can go straight up. I just don't want any exposed glue. There we go. And then we'll do our navy one here. It's kind of, oops, got it too high. There, tuck that glue dot way down there. And then this one is going to go right under here. I don't want it to cover up the words, but I do like to have those leaves just kind of curl and wrap around a little bit, wrap around the... Um, the label slide it over just a little bit. There we go. All right, now I'm going to flip the whole business over and we're going to kind of reinforce. Oh, hey, look, there was that was a, a reused piece. I <laughs> uh, that's you know, that's what we do, right? We use those scraps for everything. So I am sticking my dimensionals over top of the glue dots to kind of reinforce that those are really going to stick well. Um, oh, let's throw, what the heck, let's throw another one on here. It seems like there's no glue dot actions going on right there. I'm going to peel off those papers and pop that on. I'm going to put it right here off to the one side so my stuff can kind of move over. Um, didn't look terribly straight. There we go. I think that's okay. And then this one. Let's do the same with this. And then, you know what? We might need some embellishments. Does that surprise anybody at all? <laughs> Not if you've ever tuned in before that it doesn't. All right, come here, everybody. Everybody off the card so we can get you gluey here. 
one on you. Yes, I talk to my paper like it's real sometimes. That is pretty weird. So, and got that one right there. And so fun. We can't vote on our favorite yet because we've got to look at the finished product, right? Look at the final piece. All right. So again, I'm going to do the same thing where I start with the one I want on top first. And it's a little slippy slidey, but that's okay. We're going to shore it up here in a minute with our dimensionals. Tuck this back behind and tuck this back behind and then tuck this one right underneath. I feel like I'm a million miles from the camera. Can you guys see okay? Oops. We got a we got a naughty glue dot. It's wanting to stick on top of the label and that's not okay with me. All right. Got a wild glue dot tonight, guys. Wild Saturday night here at in the Sue Stampfield's uh, craft room. All right, we're going to reinforce these once again by slapping on our... Now, the navy and the granite are also pretty together, so um, I haven't attempted that, but that might have to be uh, another future creation because I've been doing a lot of just pairing, uh, picking one color and sticking with white, which is quite elegant and pretty but I might have to branch out a little bit. All right, and then this one is gonna go basically in the same spot. I don't know why you guys are wrapping on top of each other though. Spread those out a little bit, there we go. All right, so there we have our two cards. Let's add an embellishment. Let me see here. I'm going to add. La, 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 la. I'm going to go with pearls again. I'm really liking to. This is going to be a tie if we vote. Maybe so. Um, I am. I've really been liking pearls with this. Um, the pearls are going to go with either the navy or the white. Doesn't matter. Um, and I'm just going to add one of the large pearls. You could also just add a small or a medium. Totally up to you. But I'm just going to add one right in the right-hand corner there since I have my, my um, fronds and whatnot on the left. I'll add the pearl on the right. And there we have our two cards. Now for the inside of these cards, we can add a sentiment. We could add uh, a, you know, a fern or a frond on the inside edge to kind of match what's going on on the front. Um, lots of options there, but we're going to stop right here. That way I can use them for, you know, multiple different events there. So, so there we have our gray granite version and our Knight of Navy version. And you know what? They might depend on the event, right? So if it's a, um, a sympathy card, maybe this gray granite is, is uh, uh, more calming and peaceful to you and that might, you know, hit the right note or maybe it's a little more masculine. Um, if it's a wedding, you might go with the navy. Maybe navy is one of their colors. Um, you know, I, I think we could probably use both of them, right? This one um, has a little more going on because of the, the spray. Um, this particular stamp just has more in the images. So you could even leave out the solid one or you could leave out one of these leafy deals if you want, if that's too busy to you. Um, so many options, right? So those are our cards tonight. Uh, drop me a comment if you have a favorite. Kathy likes the granite for something a little bit different. 
is Forever Fern still current? No, I believe Forever Fern just retired. I might be incorrect on that. Um, this one, there are some similarities to that a little bit. And if you have Forever Fern in your collection, this fern embossing folder would be an awesome partner with that. Um, a lot of you are liking the gray. Some of you are liking both. The granite is a favorite. So Marsha really likes the blue. Um, I, yeah, I like them both. I, I, I do love the blue. The blue version is the one I did for a card swap recently, but I've been wanting to try it in the gray granite and I'm really glad we did. So, um, you know, there is this other stamp here too that's um, from the set that you could also use in the same layout and have that tucked behind um, just as a different look. So uh, play around with it. Enjoy your Sunprint Suite. If you haven't had a chance to pick this one up, uh, you're going to love it. <laughs> and I'm going to have more ideas that I will be sharing. Oh, Jean says Forever Fern is still current. Forever Fern, it would be a good matchup with that Fern 3D embossing folder. So Thank you so much, Joe. I'm going to flip around and thank you, uh, Jeanette and Jean, for cluing me in on the Forever Fern because can you tell I I, um, I usually do pull all my retired stuff off of my shelf um, so that I don't get confused and I haven't done it yet. So uh, I need to get on that. But thank you so much for joining me tonight, for hanging out with me in my craft room. That was really fun. Uh, thanks for voting. Kind of a different night tonight. Um, you got, you only voted for one thing and we ended up making both of them, but that's okay. Right. So, uh, as always, I do appreciate you, uh, uh, giving your input on the cards and, uh, it's been a lot of fun. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'll be back this Tuesday night, 7 30 central time. Um, we will be having, uh, some fun project sheets coming out this week. So if you've not subscribed yet, um, you're going to want to subscribe right here. And, uh, I think the one that's coming out is, uh, this fold is going to be in the next week's project sheet. So, the, which is the same fold I did for the birds. So um, I might just do a project sheet for each since they are so different. So those might be our two project sheets this week. So take care, everyone. Have a great Saturday night and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs>